We're here at Cullum Science Park. This is home to the UK Atomic Energy Authority. Our team, NJ team, has been in there since nine o'clock this morning. They're validating some of the energy cells, making sure that they work. Things have been accelerating the last couple of months now. This filming restrictions at the Atomic Energy Authority. So we've come back to the hotel. Because what we were discussing um, in the meeting with the Atomic Energy Authority was how, what is the theory behind what we do? I think it went very well because um, we had a very positive discussion. It was the first introductory meeting of our business to UK Atomic Energy Authority. It's very much about an alternative view of, of, of let's call it, what happens at those very small nuclear scales. As they quite correctly stated, if we have uh, transmutational processes and fusion processes happening in our reactors, uh, from their understanding there has to be uh, a radiation which is happening and that, that is not what we are getting as a result of the measurements. They were trying to understand, well, if they are the nuclear agency, they're used to having radiation on site and our units don't produce any ionizing radiation. So are we in their remit or are we not in their remit? They believe in hot fusion, we believe in catalyzed fusion. The most important thing I think um, out of today is that although our processes they go against textbook physics, um, Atomic Energy Authority were open to work with us. Very inquisitive. They're very um, interested to hear George's explanation of catalyzed fusion. With the view of then possibly creating a program to study the processes which are happening inside of them, to understand them better. And they, I think, would, would like the opportunity to actually see a re catalyzed fusion reactor um, validated and, and take it forward. From our scientific team, we um, were able to um, invite George, George Egli. He is based in um, our Hungarian laboratory. It was my policy always uh, during my whole life uh, to look for forgotten discoveries, forgotten inventions. I, I've wrote books on this subject. A lot of this research was done in UK as well, but right. has not been utilized and has been forgotten. So he brought with him um, a file with uh, publications so that they can educate themselves on the, on, on the research they are probably simply not aware of. The challenge of humanity we have over the next 30 years needs people to question what we think we know. Catalysis is the most fundamental process uh, in, in whole nature. Without catalysis we wouldn't uh, be here, there would be no life. Catalysis uh, is to make reactions easy. Uh, so you don't uh, have to use excess very high energy. So catalysis uh, makes life easy by reducing the energy threshold of a certain reaction. Vitamins are catalysts, enzymes are catalysts. They make some very difficult process easy, but they are very selective. We have done a lot of work to play with different variations to come up with optimum design. And this is really now our know-how, know-how of the technology to make sure that uh, the optimum conditions are achieved for this uh, reaction to happen with the minimum uh, energy consumption. All of which comes under the umbrella of a catalyzed fusion That's reaction correct. as opposed to a hot fusion reaction. That's correct. Right now the hot fusion industry is not using uh, catalyst, uh, catalysis, which is, in my opinion, a grave mistake. Uh, for engineering, there are two stuff you have to use, resonance and catalysis. Uh, in, in heavy chemistry, in, in industrial chemistry, 
you, you use catalysts all over. In different constructions, the uh, role of catalyst uh, is played by a different conglomeration of particles. It's a clump of electrons, and according to textbook physics, one million electrons should never be together. But this is the fact uh, what we observe. And in order to, to make it, that is the engineering trick, you need a very certain, very specific uh, surface structure. If you don't have that very specific surface structure, you don't have these catalytic uh, uh, agents. When an, a number of electrons comes together, uh, the, elect the local electric field is so, so strong that actually it is uh, uh, overruling the, the, the Coulomb forces. It is shielding uh, the uh, electrical repulsion uh, between uh, two, let's say, two protons or, or two uh, uh, nucleons because they have the same positive charge. Uh, therefore, in the hot fusion reactor, you need 120 million degrees C, which we just cannot imagine. And the energy, the heat is needed to overcome this Coulomb uh, barrier, this, this uh, uh, dam uh, repulsion. But if you have a big clump of electrons, then you are shielding out these two electric charges. Um, the uh, repulsion ceased. Uh, they can meet together, no problem. And the task is to, to make these clumps together in the most efficient and the cheapest way. And that is my job. We, as a commercial company, of course, is focusing, are focusing on, um, on making sure we create a product which we can push out to the market as fast as possible. The main thing is to start sales. So what we are planning on doing this year is spending the rest of the year working on the different energy cell types we have yep. to see what are the most valuable outputs. We can modify our device, uh, optimize for tritium. Producing tritium or deuterium or helium or hydrogen, they're very valuable outputs from the energy cells. For us it was very important to uh, get government agency involved in what we do. Uh, both for credibility purposes and also for uh, to make sure that we get a fast track with uh, all possible approvals we need to actually get the product to the market. I was uh, investment banking for 13 years and for the last 20 years I've been involved in clean tech development. Uh, there's a huge amount of money going into fusion, it's definitely uh, become a very popular topic. The people that are receiving that money are the groups that have built that credibility. That's very much what today was about with the UK Atomic Energy Authority. They're also the team are working very closely with Cambridge University to start to bring in that technical validation that's absolutely necessary to bring in the large scale capital that we're planning over the next period of time. Cambridge University has the theoretical condensed matter labs and in the theoretical condensed matter labs there is the physicists there with the fundamental knowledge of the specific areas of uh, fusion that we're very interested in having mainstream researchers investigating. We have two types of samples that we are going to look at and one is from a small reactor that converts uh, electric power to electric power while increasing the, the uh, power output with a positive COP of uh, around three to six. And another sample is from our own laboratory in uh, Portugal where we are looking on uh, um, transmutation effects. Well, the results of this test, uh, as it was shown in Portugal, will uh, further prove that we have transmutational processes happening in, um, in our reactors. And uh, this will allow to um, put the valuation of our company in the range of valuation which uh, fusion companies currently have, in the range of billions. Independent validations are very important, credibility at the government level is very important and thirdly we've got a cash flow coming in by at least quarter two next year and then we're off to the races. It's about then increasing our production capacities and increasing our, um, 
our scaling. We need to move forward and so the idea is that we um, start deploying or creating prototypes that we start deploying and then optimize the proto prototypes on the go. I think there's a huge amount of uh, capital sitting on the sidelines that would love to join a journey like that, particularly also because of the carbon credit potential that this technology also deploys. Mm. And that's becoming a very interesting market again. They may crack hot fusion in the next 10 years or 20 years, but catalyzed fusion has been shown to work now.